Hi, and welcome to another lesson in our series of SOLIDWORKS training tutorials. In this lesson, we'll look at making use of derived sketches and copied sketches to help reduce the amount of sketching required. So let's get into it. So as you can see, we've already got a sketch created here. It's called Source. If we look in the Feature Manager design tree. So we've got a source sketch already created. Now we're going to use that sketch to create another sketch in the right plane. So I can left click on this sketch and I can come up here to the menu and I can go edit and copy or you can use the old reliable control C, control V to copy and paste. So I'll just copy that sketch and then on the right plane I'll control V then and paste the sketch. And we get that sketch pasted, pasted on the right hand plane. So you might be wondering why the sketch is orientated the way it is. The reason for that is because of the coordinate system of the right plane versus the top plane. When sketching on the top plane, vertical is along the z-axis of the part, while on the right plane, the vertical is in the y direction. Rather than trying to redefine relations in the sketch, we're going to reorientate it and we'll use the Modify Sketch tool to rotate the entire sketch, redefining which direction is vertical. So if I right click on the sketch one and edit the sketch, and you can see I've already got Modify Sketch in here. Again, you can just um, drag and drop it from the menu here, or if you go in here under Tools and Sketch Tools, we've got our Modify in there. So I'm going to modify the sketch now. I'm going to change its orientation or its rotation to 270 degrees and just hit enter. And I'll close that. And if I just look at that, you can see in isometric view there, you can see the way it's orientated itself around there. Now I can just hold control down and click on both of those and make them coincident to each other. And click OK on that. And that gets that sketch lined up and it's fully defined. Now I don't want this to be exactly the same, so I'm gonna modify it slightly. I just grab that 65 degree and tidy that up a little bit. So I go normal two on that. And this dimension here, I need to change that. So I'm going to change that just to the standard dimension. We're going to make that 25. And we're going to change this radius 20 to radius 15. And again, we're going to change this one here. So I'm going to just delete that dimension. And I'll just pop in another dimension here. From there to there. And we make that 12.5. And that's me finished. So finish modifying that sketch. So I can exit that sketch and throw it in isometric and you can see that. So next to our derived sketch. So a derived sketch retains a link to the sketch they are copied from. They're dependent on the original for size and shape, but not location and usage. You can't edit the geometry or dimensions of a derived sketch. You can only locate it with respect to the model. Changes to the original sketch propagate to the derived copies. So to access the derived sketch command, both the source sketch and the plane it we've copied to must be pre-selected. So if I hold control then and select the source sketch and the top plane, and then I can pop up here and I go insert and derive sketch and it creates that sketch and if you look it's actually opened up and we're in editing the sketch so you can see here the sketch it, it gives it its name a standard name so sketch to the next name on the list but it has derived after it so it lets us know that this is a derived sketch so it's not much use to me sitting on top of the other one so I'm going to modify the sketch again and this time using these little black buttons here I can right click on that and just flip it over so it's like mirroring the the component 
and I can close that. And like before, I can just hold control down and select those points and make it coincident. Now, it's not fully defined yet, so let's just investigate and see what, what's actually kind of keeping it. So you can see it's not just, you know, so there's nothing kind of constraining that, if you like, for uh, along that edge. So we can either just make it in that, in that direction, or I can just, again, select those two points, make them coincident, and now we've got that fully defined sketch. So we can exit that sketch. And that's all our sketch is complete. So next we're going to create the solid geometry of this part. And it doesn't really make any difference whether we use loft or boundary on this one. We're going to use the boundary boss base on this one. Um, and we're going to make sure that we merge tangent face, faces. So I'll go across the features. And we'll use the boundary boss space. And again, we're just going to pick our points. So this point, this point, and this point. And you notice I've got Mesh Preview selected there, and you can change the number of meshes just to see how that actually behaves, if you like. So we don't have to really worry about these in this exercise. So just to get a little bit more control over it, we can I just spin this around so I can get at this a bit better. If we right-click on that edge, we can add a connector. You can see it adds that connector in. And this is where the mesh preview comes in handy. So you can actually, if you want to just manipulate it a little bit, so you can kind of come along and just pull that around. Just be careful again with all of these. Careful you don't move too far. If you cross over the, uh, it'll just error out on you. So don't move them too far. But you do, you can see there you get, uh, again with the mesh. It's difficult enough to see on a profile like this. So the mesh kind of gives you at least a little bit of an indication of the way the curve is going on that. And at any stage then, you can right click and reset the connectors on that. So if you don't like what you've done, you can kind of reset it. So that's me done. I'll just click OK on that. And we get our component finished. If you want to add a little appearance to it, you can pop in here, maybe give it high gloss. And maybe we'll go with red. Just to give it a little bit of a finish on that. If you have any questions about this video or if you'd just like to leave a comment, feel free to pop one in the comments below. I'll try to reply to as many as I can. While you're here, if you feel you got some value from this, if you could just hit that like button and subscribe to my channel as I'll be posting new content every week. And thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.